This Hangout on Air is live. This is damn good coffee time. Friday Night Funnies now. We are watching uh, the next episode uh, after the pilot of On the Air, directed by David Lynch. This is episode two. Um, I just wanted to report that the golden uh, face mask really did work a treat. Um, so I'll just get my video cassette out of, uh, as you can see, a bit dusty there, uh, of on the air. He recorded on an actual BBC. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there, the BBC videotape. Um, it was broadcast in the UK on uh, BBC Two. Um, so just put that into the recorder there and hopefully this will be okay let's watch episode two of on the air uh the follow-on from twin peaks uh written or at least conceived by both mark frost and david lynch but uh, episode two, I'll just talk to you as I watch it. Uh, if anyone's in the chat, of course, I'll talk to you as well. Uh, this this episode is also available on YouTube on the channel DNA Lavery uh, with Japanese subtitles. I presume taken from the Japanese laser discs that were released of this. It starts in 1957. Uh, the title is 1957. We go to the shot of the uh, skyscraper, you know, in New York, and shots from uh, that era of New York with a slow jazz theme from Angelo Badalamenti. Then to inside the studio, the Zablotnik Broadcasting Company. Uh, to a shot of the world in black and white from afar, from space, with uh, the signal of uh, this TV station showing, you know, on a pylon. Uh, not dissimilar images to ones used in uh, season three of Twin Peaks, really. Written by Mark Frost, episode two, and uh, directed by Leslie Linkerglatter, who you may be familiar with from uh, Twin Peaks, of course. And she was one of the most popular directors of Twin Peaks, actually, the season one and two. Um, we're in Betty's dressing room, and she's receiving lots and lots of gifts because of the popularity of uh, the first episode of the Lester Guy show. Ian Buchanan playing Lester Guy. Looking uh, jealous of the uh, amount of gifts, obviously, that Betty's got. So the background supporting characters are quite uh, often the sources of comedy more than the leading ones, really. But the director's played by David Lander, of course, from Twin Peaks as well, and his uh, sidekick is uh, McDonagall, who appeared in Wild at Heart uh, as the uncle who uh, did something wicked to L Lula in it. And anyway, here we have uh, 
the artist formerly known as Albert Ro Rosenfield in this reprising pretty much the same role in many ways. Uh, Betty's getting a car sent to her apartment, but, uh, you know, she says there's no way it can get there because it's, I live on the seventh floor, so... Lester guy has ended up with the cactus on top that he got as a gift from the uh, head of ZBC on his head with balloons stuck to it. So. Mention of South Dakota there. Uh, not North Dakota, so. Zablotnik, the head of the company, is a, a major fan of Lester Guy's movie he made called Piccadilly Circus. This is main, they're basically the reason he's in this new show. So, Buddy Budwala and Lester Guy are formulating a plan to get rid of Betty, uh, his co-star, who they regard as being uh, just uh, uh, you know they regarded her as as pretty useless, basically. Uh, This, I mean, com in comparison to the pilot episode, episode one, this, this one is, uh, has far more dialogue in it. It's far more dialogue heavy, uh, thus far at least. Uh, and has comedy in it right from the start, really. Uh, some of it blatantly uh, just obvious slapstick stuff, but uh, it's based on also a bit of wordplay. And considering this is just written by Mark Frost, it's uh, it is quite apparent. Like all of the. You know, all of the dialogue is good. So, 
I think Mark Frost deserves credit for that. Um, in the background, we can see hula dancers and uh, the this kind of tropical, you know, hula theme or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's the, exactly the same music as used in uh, Dr. Jacoby's uh, office or uh, you know ha apartment where he has his uh, clients you know or uh, works as a psychiatrist in uh, this first season of Twin Peaks you know and he's got it made up to look like uh, sort of that kind of Hawaiian or whatever setting with the coconut and all that kind of thing Betty's in complete dreamland here. Ian Buchanan's performance is good, definitely. Uh, not a million miles away from Dick Tremaine either, although he's... The Hurry Up Twins are in the background there. Um, Betty's upset again, of course. References to the Princess of Wales from Leicester there and uh, the Queen Mum. Leicester guy is obviously supposed to be English, uh, even though Ian McKinnon, the actor, is Scottish. Very dramatic uh, shot of Lester there saying sweaters for the Cold War. Um, Betty's eating some chiplets. Uh, Ian. Taken to meet uh, Zablotnik, the um, head of the corporation, the broadcasting company, you know. Um, instead of uh, 
Betty being taken to uh, Sublotnik by a real uh, driver. She's being taken by um, Lester Guy himself, who's disguised himself with a cunning moustache. Um, Quite a long taxi scene here, anyway. Uh, but yeah, Betty's jumped out. We're now in a diner setting. Well, it's not a diner, a restaurant. Uh, most lynchian part of the episode in a way the blinky watts now is messing around with whatever on the soundboard he sees tw blinky sees 25.62 as much as we do because he suffers from bozeman's simplex uh there was a weird, sort of slowed down shot of a duck going behind the curtain and then some special some kind of music Anyway, Betty's now in the uh, cafe place, restaurant, and uh, Buddy Budwaller and uh, his assistant, etc., are in hiding there, very obviously. Both, both of the uh, men working in the Italian restaurant are called Giuseppe, so they both turn... They're doing something with a listening device and a box with helium gas in it. And I have no idea what's going off, honestly, but. Uh, he's put the listening device inside a olive. So that's going to work, obviously. Um, Mr. Zablotnik is here now, wearing his blatantly obvious wig. Speaking in this kind of, I don't know what kind of language you're supposed to be talking, but it's... She's fainted all of a sudden, as soon as he says hello to her, Betty. Um... No, I've not watched uh, Red Net Mel Letter Media's Nerd Crew, but I'll have a look. Uh, it sounds interesting. Um, Josh Backhouse writes Cormac McCarthy. Um, hi, I'm there, Mark. By the way, I can't I can't say Miguel Ferre properly. I don't know how to pronounce it, so. Uh, I just call him Albert, but um,
It is for Albert in an alternate timeline, really, as Voltaire's Balsack uh, observes. I mean, the actress who plays um, <laughs> Betty is, uh, you know, these olives are fantastic. Lucky for me, I like the pits. Now you get a close-up of her looking at his uh, obvious wig. I was going to draw a comparison between uh, the actress who plays Betty, who I apologise for not uh, saying her name right now, but uh, she just reminded me a little bit of Cheryl Lee. Uh, it's partly the makeup and things like that, but Pizza disaster. Anyway, um, the accent is absolutely ridiculous. This Zablotnik. I mean, he's saying he thinks he thought Betty was acting in the show and that she couldn't believe that she's actually like she appears to be. Uh, Betty wants to speak to Lester privately now, so uh, I will uh, obviously just watch this till the end. It's nearly finished now, but uh, she asks for a raise, asking or asking Lester if she can. Sorry, if he can help with a uh, raise for her. Yeah, I must say that's that is one of the stranger episodes of On the Air by far. Uh, but overall, quite good. I would watch it again just because I was missing some of it a bit. Uh, just being aware that I was supposed to be commenting on it, but uh, really, I think you should watch it prior to doing any commentary on it. Um, it's a bit, quite a difficult thing to do a commentary on anyway, probably. Um, but yeah, yeah, I really liked that one as a whole. But on the other hand, I do think uh, other episodes are um, better, or at least more my favourites. You know, that one seemed a bit sort of just uh, more of an, another intro type of episode, like the first one. But yeah, it was pretty funny and uh, 
most importantly, the dialogue was really good throughout the whole thing, and I was kind of missing it a bit. But um, I'd, I would need to watch it again. So, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, trying to find on the air. Like I said, this one is on DNA Lavery on uh, YouTube. So have a look. The channel is DNA Lavery. Um, it's worth having a look, definitely. So thank you, everybody, who's been here. And I hope some people catch up later, you know. Uh, all the best for now, and I'll see you again on Sunday when we do the show then, unless I have some reason to do a, a show before then. So all the best for now, and see you again.